Hello everyone! Today is the chapter 19 of Proverbs of our Get Why series. This was supposed to be posted on Saturday, but we had a mishap and it is delayed until today. So I hope um, you are still able to do this. Go ahead and get your Bible and you'll need a paper and pen for today. Um, I always encourage for paper and pen, so just know anytime you see me, you're going to need that. Um, so go ahead and turn to that chapter. And what I'm going to have you do is, again, read the whole chapter first. So this is where I love to encourage, um, put some worship music on, um, or just get in a quiet, alone space and just read it. And um, to go ahead and take notes on anything that sticks out to you. So go ahead now pause um, and then come back after you've done that. Okay, so hopefully that was enough time for you to pause and read the whole chapter. Um, a lot of times what I like to do is specifically go over just something that stuck out to me um, to keep it a little short. But of course, if we don't hit any verses today that you personally had questions on, um, you can message me, um, contact Garrett, uh, myself, or Ryan to get some more clarity. Um, but what really stuck out to me, um, I wish I could ask you what stuck out to you, <laughs> so I'm trying not to do that because it's a video. Um, but at first, what really drew my attention this whole chapter was how much it talked about the poor. Um, so that was something that continued to draw my attention. And it almost seemed to talk down the poor a lot. And that, at first, I was not sure how I felt about that. So if you look, for example, at verse 4 of chapter 19, it said, Wealth brings many new friends, but a poor man is deserted by his friend. Um, then verse 7, it says, All a poor man's brothers hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursues them with words, but does not have them. Um... And so at first, um, if you're anything like me, I was like, what? Maybe that's not necessarily true. Um, a poor man doesn't always, isn't always deserted by his friend. Um, and a poor man's brother doesn't always hate him. And again, that's going back to uh, Proverbs is not a guarantee. It's not promises. It's, it's general godly wisdom. And there's a few things about this. Um, when it's talking about the poor, it's talking in general. It's also talking about in that time. Um, you might see my husband walking around in the back. Just ignore him. Um, but the poor, even today, but especially in this time, we're really looked down upon. And that's something we need to keep in our minds. Um... But it is also, I believe, with Proverbs, it is talking about financial, um, financially being poor. But we see consistently throughout Proverbs that money is not everything. In almost every proverb I've read, um, it says something about um, basically someone's character is worth way more than the money they have or something like that. So we know that he's not just talking about being poor or wealthy. Um, so keep that in mind. But then also what I learned is this brings us to some really good points. So if you look at verses, there's three verses that talk up about the poor. Um, so if you look at verses 1, 17 and 22, one says, better is a poor person who walks in his integrity than one who is crooked in speech and is a fool. Um, so we see that it is, it is better uh, to be without wealth um, but have integrity than someone who is crooked in their speech and, and a fool. Um, so we see right there, there's, it's more about integrity than your wealth. Like we were mentioning earlier, 17, um, it says, whoever is generous to the poor, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. Um, so we see that it is the Lord's work um, 
that the Lord sees when, when someone is generous to the poor, um, and that it's the Lord's work to be generous to them. Um, so that's a compliment of being generous to the poor and loving the poor, but that is what the Lord has for us to do. And then 22, what is desired in a man is steadfast love, and a poor man is better than a liar. So it is better to be poor. And this is, again, remember, this is a king talking to his his sons who are also in line to be king, um, that it is better for them even to be poor um, than it is to be a liar. And so as much as it talks about the poor not having friends um, or people or the poor not really having anything, um, he's comparing it, though, in the same chapter to... And it's better to be that. It's better to be without friends than without integrity. It's better to be um, without those things um, than to be a liar. And so I think it was really good, the more that I looked at it, that it's comparing and contrasting um, about the poor in different ways. But it ultimately led to several good things, like in one seventeen and 22. Um, I hope that makes sense, what I was trying to say. But the poor continued to be mentioned throughout this chapter, and so that is what grabbed my attention the most, and I wanted to talk to you, talk to you all about it and then challenge you in it. So I have two questions for you to take away from this, and hopefully an action to do uh, because of this. So um, really, going back to 17, um, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. Um, there can, it, it's part of our culture, really, here, that if we think of homeless on the street, um, sometimes we may want to help them, or maybe sometimes we do more so than others. But um, oftentimes, I know even I just try to quickly walk by and <laughs> try not to be talked to by them or something, because they are always asking for money. Um, typically. But I have a question. How do you find ways to help the poor wisely? Um, because that is something we see in scripture right here in, chap in chapter 19, verse 17, um, that it's the Lord's work. And so how could we wisely do that? Um, and yes, I think that there are wise ways to do it and not wise ways to do it. Um, but how could we be wise about it? So I want you to go ahead and pause and brainstorm some ideas on your paper um, about what would be some wise ways for you to help the poor around you. Okay, so hopefully you paused and brainstormed about that. Um, the question is, how do you find ways to help the poor wisely? Um, some ways that I've heard about and have actually applied somewhat and I love is to carry, especially in the winter when it is cold, but clothes and blankets in the back of your car. Um, this year, um, my church made little care packages that had scarves, gloves, a few candies, um, I think a small thing of water, and maybe a granola bar in the bag. But things that can help you, oh, and some hand warmers, um, those that you open up and shake and it, they get warm. And so putting a little care package bag together of whatever you have that could help keep them warm and, and a snack or hydrated. Um, that's a beautiful idea. Um, carrying around some old blankets or when you're at Walmart and there's a sale on blankets or something, grabbing some blankets, putting them in the back of your car. Um, they can help you in a time of need, but you can also give them when it's cold um, to people who are evidently very cold on the street. Food. I try to always carry around food in my purse. Um, Gary and I actually try to make a point not to carry cash around with us because we are asked often for money. Um, and for sometimes there is times that we have given money because we felt that it was necessary and it, it was enough to buy that person a, a, um, like a bus ticket or some food. Um, but we typically try not to. Um, because we don't know where it's going, but we offer them food or blanket or to, to meet a need. Um, so 
there are times that like there's a subway right by or something I'll say can I just go grab you a sandwich um so try to think of ways um that you could help and then my challenge for you is what are you actually going to do um because we can think about ways all day long but unless we actually do something we're not being a part of it so I think as Christians as as the church um, if we're not living what we believe, we're the biggest hypocrites. And so, no, that doesn't mean we need to give the homeless money every time they ask um, or something like that. But we can show love and care and not just blow by them um, and take care of them because the Lord made them, made them and the Lord does not make mistakes. And so um, treating them as equal people um, and to love them and giving them some needs. And if they don't want your help, that is okay. But at least you offer to help meet some need in their life. Um, and are willing to talk with them and help them. And so my challenge for you is what are you actually going to do about it? So um, right now, when we end, I would love for you to do one more thing. It would be to write down what can you actually do. And so whether that's put water bottles in the back of your car whether that is to get some blankets or just buy some granola bars. and keep some granola bars that are specifically for people who come up to you and ask you for food or money that you can give. Um, and maybe a dollar. You can always give someone a dollar if you wanted to have some dollars. Um, that is not something Garrett and I do, but um, that can even be very helpful to buy them a small burger or something. So um, what are you going to do? That is my challenge for you to live out what we have read some about today. And I hope that you do it. And I'm excited to hear about what you do. Um, we're thankful for you guys. We love you guys. I hope that uh, you enjoyed this today. If you have any questions, of course, contact us. Um, Y'all have a great day. And we'll see you next time. Bye.